this morning we're going to spend a little time continuing our discussion on nymphing. We have low water and as a result we're going to find an indicator that can pair up nicely with these two small nymphs that we're going to be fishing. One of them is what we call a Pertagon style fly. I'm going to do a quick little demonstration. We were not able to do this in our class but this is a thin small fly designed to achieve depth pretty fast. This particular pattern name is called the Gasolina. The color scheme looks almost like as if gasoline was spilled into the water. And then we have a little tiny zebra midge above that. Now because we're fishing lightweight flies, what we need is an indicator that is sensitive enough to sense the strike of a lightweight rig. And the indicators that we had used in class, these pinch on indicators work really well for this matter. They're easier to cast, fairly low uh, maintenance and easy to use for starters. These are the angler's image pinch on indicators and because we're using such little weight, all we're going to do is just take half of an indicator that we had cut in half here and pinch that onto our indicator about oh, 24, 26 inches above the point fly. And I'll explain this a little in greater detail in my office. But one of the things you want to think about with an indicator, one is find an indicator that you can see, obviously. Different colors show up better or worse against different backgrounds and different lighting conditions. So find an indicator that you can see easily. But then also the buoyancy factor of the indicator versus the weight of the rig. I call it the tipping point, but essentially what you are striving for is for an indicator like this, which is a suspension device. It is holding your flies at a fixed depth. You want just enough buoyancy within the indicator itself to suspend the flies. But any resistance to that fly, whether it's the mouthing of a trout or just the flies coming in contact with the bottom, any resistance is going to immediately shoot that indicator under. If the indicator is too large and too buoyant and you have a lightweight rig, when the fish strikes, the indicator is barely going to move. So if you can kind of pair them up to the buoyancy of the indicator to the weight of the rig and fine tune that to a, a greater degree, you're going to find that you're going to have a much quicker reaction when the indicator goes under. And, and Another thing we're going to do is because we're going to be putting line leader on the water and we're going to need to do some degree of mending at some point. That is mending is a, a movement where you can make the movement during the cast or in this case we're going to make the mending. We're going to basically reposition off in line and leader on the water to give us a natural presentation. That's what we call mending. And the easiest way to mend line is having line on the surface of the water. If it's sunken below the leader, it's very difficult to reposition that line leader on the water to give you a natural presentation. And one of the things we can do to make it easier for us to mend is above your indicator, we're going to take a paste, a floatant silicon style paste, and we're going to just grease this leader all the way up to maybe the first feet or couple feet of the fly line. But when you do this, now, when you mend, it, you're easily going to be able to reposition line leader in the water. The other thing that this does, especially in this low clear water that we're going to be seeing, is that if you have a, a leader or fly line below the surface and you quickly try to mend or reposition the line, that line has got to push up towards the surface and it's going to create a disturbance, spooking fish. So this makes it easier for mending, but also it creates a stealthier mend uh, for that part. One of the things you want to consider with low clear water is the way you present the fly. You don't want to take the rod tip and slam the indicator and fly on the water. And often when you're looking down on the water surface, you immediately want to push that rod tip down, slamming the indicator and line leader in the water. In this water, that type of presentation like we saw on Spring Creek during our field trips are going to spook fish. Instead of looking down and right, 
and slamming the line leader on the water. Stop the rod dip higher, look out, aim the rod dip, and basically lay that out and allow the line and indicator to land softly on the water surface. Kind of working right up this channel. We've got a little bit of current, dead center, very shallow sides. Work the edges now first. And what I'm trying to do, remember we're trying to place indicator and flies all in the same speed current. Casting parallel to the flow of water we want to hit. Trying to avoid casting across stream, but instead of casting upstream, putting line and leader all in the same speed current, giving you the hopes of a good presentation and one that you have control and sensitivity between indicator and fly. Shift gears now, we're gonna work out a little more dead center. Now as we work up, the water is deepening, it's getting a little faster. We might have to make a slight weight adjustment. Ideally, we want to be coming in contact with the bottom on occasion, not frequently, but just once in a while. And Right now, I'm not seeing any indication of my fly getting close to stream bottom. So all we're gonna do now, just make a slight white change. And these are things that you gotta do. Trout are not gonna meet you halfway sometimes. In these conditions where there's little activity, cold water, you have got to go to the fish. So this, these are the little things, just the discipline of just taking a moment, understanding that you're not getting the drift that you need, and just adding a little bit of weight. Or in this case, going to a, a fly with a bead that's one size larger than the previous one. Oops. That's what happens when you talk. Do our simple clinch here. So this is still the Gasolina, a little Pertagon. We're just going one bead size heavier. Gives a little more weight, hopefully a little more depth, and hopefully a little more success. Line control, line control. Reach. Work this edge again. Right down the middle. Rod uh, tip is out. Stripping in line about the same speed as the currents come back to me. Indicator stops. I'm gonna set the hook. Now with this, keep the line pinched underneath your rod hand. And when you do want to strip in a fish rather than use the reel, just Stripping the line behind the rod hand. Fishes up, nice smooth entry into the net. Cool. Now, remember in class, we're trying to keep the fish as wet as possible. That protective slime protects it from diseases and parasites. <clears throat> Never want to drag a fish up on the bank. Hands wet before you land the fish or touch the fish. You can just grab on your barbless fly, comes right out, and set it back on its way. All right. Now okay. So, when you're casting, we're going. We're talking about line control, a surface drag. Basically, the more line and leader that's on the water, coming in contact with the faster currents, 
the more likely that faster current is going to create a drag. And remember with nymph fishing, most of the time we're looking for the flies to be drifting with the current. In the same, basically with the flow, and about the same speed, sometimes a little bit slower. And when I keep, and I, and I have the ability to reach, keep more line leader off the water, what that does, it just decreases that surface tension. And if I have to put a lot of line on the water, the more line on the water, the more drag, and often the less likely a fish is going to eat my fly because it's moving often at a faster rate than what the naturals are. So just the ability to keep more line leader off the water is going to just give you better line control and a much more natural presentation. The other thing about less line in the water is control from a hook set standpoint. If I have a cast and I put a bunch of slack in the water and the fish hits my indicator and I have to elevate my rod tip, by the time I elevate my rod tip and pick up that slack, often that fish is gone. So by just making the cast here and stripping in the line about the same speed as the current, keeping the line fairly nice and straight without dragging the fly, the moment that indicator goes under, I can immediately set the hook. So just these little things definitely add up to a lot at the end of the day. One of the things you'll see this time of the year in the fall, you know, especially during the months of November and early December here in central Pennsylvania, we'll often have spawning. And usually spawning beds for brown trout you'll see are essentially like these really clean sections of water, really bright sections of water. You'll see how there's also the, kind of this dead, dying, de decaying debris and kind of this dirtier floor. And then all of a sudden you'll see this bright, glossy, almost as if the pebbles had been shined because they have been by the, the trout. But when you see this, you see fish holding on that, just avoid these spots. These are areas where trout need to reproduce, procreate to continue on with the next generations. So one of the things I like about indicator tactics compared to tight lining, that is fishing without an indicator, is that in water like this, especially a situation like this where with tight line nymphing, the idea is that when you cast, you can basically fish closer to the rod tip, you can hold more line leader off the water. Based on the length of your leader and the length of your rod, you have a maximum range that you can effectively tight line nymph. And when you have a current like this that's actually sweeping away from you, well towards the other side of the bank, I am, inc I am completely limited, even with this 11 foot rod and longer leader. So in this situation, I can't effectively tight line them because when I'm casting and leading the flies, I'm likely to pull the flies towards me just based on how far away the current is and how close in position where I'm at. So in these situations, this is where I like a suspension device where I can come here, make my cast. If I need a mend, just reposition the line leader on the water, let the indicator fish, the flies for me. So indicator tactics definitely have their place. We spent most of the time in class talking about indicator tactics. It's a good start. It's not the only approach but there are different groups in fly fishing that will tell you you need to only tight line nymph and then there will be folks that tell you to only indicator tactics. And the point is you need to use both of them because both of them have their time and place. Rod tip down, bring the rod tip up, fish in the net, right on. Mending, we have two options. One is this. Remember we talked about trying to keep the fly line, leader and fly and indicator all kind of in that same speed current and avoid trying to cast and position different move parts of your leader in different speed currents. So what we can do is what we call a mend. Now, a mend is something we can do either in the air. So as an example, I have a current that's pulling away from me. I can make a mend on the water, meaning as soon as I make a cast, which is perpendicular flow, I can 
elevate the rod tip and just basically reposition the line leader so everything now is, is in the same speed current. So you can do mending on the water. Another thing you can do is do a mend in the air. And the mend is something you do after the cast stroke is made. So in this instance, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop the rod tip high and then just reach. Position the line leader in the same speed current before it falls on the water. So you have two options when you're mending. You can cast, elevate the rod tip, and then just reposition the line leader so it's nice and parallel. Or what I try to prefer most of the time is I try to do the mending in the air here. That way when you mend on the air, in the air, you're gonna make far less surface disturbance as you would when you're mending on the water. But the whole idea is that when you are forced to cast across currents, putting line leader in different speed currents, you're gonna to have to somehow make an adjustment. And we can do that with a mend, in this case, on the water. But keeping everything as parallel and in control as we can. That's kind of The other thing about the hook set is on these streams that are hard fish, as you found out, as we did our field trips on Spring Creek, trout can spit out a fly in a split second. They're not gonna hold on to that bait or that fly. So when a fish hits your fly and you see the indicator move, you've got to make a quick movement downstream. Remembering fish are faced upstream. So when you set the hook, any hesitation, you just need to quickly move the rod tip downstream fast, pulling the fly towards the fish's mouth. And again, the less slack I have between my rod tip and my indicator, the quicker I'm able to create enough energy to actually begin moving the fly downstream for my hook set. If there's too much slack, I move the rod tip and by the time I regain control, put tension in that fly, that fish has already spit out that fly. So it's just a fine balance to enough slack and control. And there's the bottom. And when you do hook bottom, double check. Sometimes you can hook a fish and you're, you're thinking it's, it's a bottom and all of a sudden the rocks or the bottom starts moving. But in this case, it's bottom. In this case, when I set the hook, I set the hook downstream. Normally, all we're gonna do is just reposition the rod tip above and try to pull the fly in the opposite direction in which you set the hook. Remember when you set, you're pulling downstream. If you get stuck, chances are if you could just position the rod tip slightly upstream and pull in the op opposite direction, you're gonna free that fly. Now we're gonna check the hook and go back to work. Cast right there. Short casts, short drifts. But getting stuck on the bottom, it's all part of the nymphing game. If you're not nymphing correctly, or if you're not hanging up on the bottom occasionally, you're probably not nymphing correctly. You know, tight line nymphing, fishing without indicator, you know, you do have a range. And for me, that range is, you know, usually, you know, 20 to 25 feet. In low clear water like this, often we need to make a longer cast. And an indicator or suspension device in this matter allows me to make a cast greater than 20, 25 feet and have control. So again, another reason why you just need to learn how to tight line nymph and also fish indicators. Longer cast, single fly, kind of reach and just watch that indicator just drift at the same speed as the bubbles. Slow presentation, but we need distance here. Laying that right on the water there. Gentle presentation, try not to slam the line and indicator on the water. It's a little hesitation. And when you have this low clear water like you have here, in pocket water, broken water, faster sections of water, when the fish strikes, it's often gonna be a little more aggressive and the strikes are gonna be a little more apparent. Here, in this slow water, the takes are often significantly slower. So all we're looking for is just a little hesitation, just a little pause, that indicator. 
And knowing the fact that I'm fishing maybe three, four foot of water and my indicator is only two feet above my fly, knowing that, knowing the math, there's very little chance that my fly is able to grab bottom. So if you know you're fishing deeper water and you have a shallow indicator rig, any hesitation, you should immediately begin to set the hook just knowing in fact that your fly is likely in the mouth of a fish and less likely on stream bottom based on the simple math.